Laura Ingram recently aired a 10 minute rant, a very salty rant in regard to some of the progressive women who just got elected into Congress. Now, many of these women made history, some of whom will be the first Muslims in Congress. We have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is the youngest woman who's been elected into Congress. But Laura Ingram doesn't see that as a good thing. She apparently sees that as a very negative thing. And what I found hilarious, and you will notice this throughout the various clips that we show you, is that she tried to make all of these women seem scary, but failed miserably and made them seem awesome. So um, let's go to the first clip. Here's Laura Ingram talking about uh, the four new Democratic women who got elected into Congress. Congresswoman-elect Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, and Ocasio-Cortez tweeted out this picture of themselves at a progressive caucus orientation the other day. Check it out. They captioned the picture, squad. And another photo with the hashtag, change can't wait. Nancy Pelosi might have tagged this one, mob squad, help. Well, these women may as well be the four horsewomen of the apocalypse for the Democratic Party, if you ask me, because they represent some of the most radical views in Congress. Free college for all, free health care for all, the abolishment of ICE, a Green New Deal where the US depends entirely on renewable energy. Have fun in those planes. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay, so she attempted to fear monger about the word squad. Her, her jokes are horrible. I don't know who's writing her, uh, her script, but that person needs to get fired. And then um, the scary things that she listed included, radical things she listed included free college, and free healthcare, scary, real scary. Yeah. Wow, we should all be <laughs> alarmed. Man, what are they gonna think of next? You know, what's amazing <laughs> is the demographic that watches Fox News is much older. Mm -hmm. They're typically around their 70s. And a lot of those people are having a difficult time paying for their own health care, right? They might have Medicare coverage, which certainly needs to be expanded, needs to cover more. Um, and and I know that because my father's on Medicare, and Medicare is a great program. It's important, but we need to fund it, and we need to make sure that it covers more of the treatments and the care that um, people need. But like the people who are watching this segment, this very segment, are suffering under the healthcare system that we currently have. It's amazing that they keep mentioning things like free healthcare, as if most Americans are against that. And it's not free; it's paid for through our hard-earned taxpayer money. Right, that yeah. is directed towards social services versus towards corporations and corporate welfare and kickbacks for big fossil fuel companies. And that was something else that she hammered in on was the Green New Deal agenda, which also she tried to um, market as being awful. You know, I think what was interesting about this segment besides like the weird ways that she was fear mongering, like calling this a juvenile display or a seditious coup that's happening because of these four women, mm -hmm. is that not only is Fox News fear mongering towards the Republican base, the far right Republican base, but she was trying to fear monger moderate Democrats. And mm -hmm. that was really interesting because I was like, who from this base is watching you? Right. And you know, she was almost doing a sympathetic display of Pelosi. Like, Pelosi, watch out because these women are gonna come after you. And it was just stunning that their breath of inciting fear is so, so immense yeah. that they wanna just enact it on everybody. Laura should go into development, television development, <laughs> because the last time she used one of those phrases, it became a TV show on Showtime. It's called Shut Up and Dribble. That's what she <laughs> said to LeBron. Um, so that we, we, we should look for four horse women of the apocalypse. It's gonna be a great show. But the, the thing that really uh, stands out to me is that we, we talk a lot about straight white men and their agenda and they're losing their minds and what's happening now. But white women have been very problematic as well. And I think we ignore. So this is the year of the woman where women have to fight for women and against women. Because people like Laura Ingram and all of these other women who profess this hatred towards other women, the professors, the Beckys, the barbecue women. There is an abundance of white women who, the women who elected Ted Cruz that are a problem for everybody as well. 
well. Mm -hmm. Those women that even call themselves allies and are part of the agenda who are losing their minds that their privilege might be dwindling down and continuously become a threat to all people and marginalized groups. When I hear someone like Laura Ingram speak, I'm not surprised. She sits there and professes hate all the time. Why we're shocked, I don't know. That's what she does. When it seems like an insecure woman watching four young women of color assuming positions of power, and that seems to be very threatening to her, you know, and it's disgusting to watch. Um, but, you know, I, I really am just that professor that just got a black woman uh, arrested at school because she had her feet on the desk and said it was a lack of civility. <laughs> and then you watch all of the videos with all of these white women who are doing this. We keep ignoring them in the name of feminism. They are not on our side. Mm -hmm. If you elect Ted Cruz, you are not on our side. And they are a problem, too. And we cannot ignore this problem. Right, right. I, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the latest Dave Chappelle skits, but I do love one joke he has, which is he talks about how white folks went in for a heist. But the only difference between white men and white women is that white women got half of the cut yeah. and they don't realize they got half of the cut. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's the big issue is that they still think they're part of the heist. Yep. Yeah. And they're getting the raw deal. And I will say, which is really interesting though, I don't want to ignore that. We do know that she peddles hate, but the ways that she is programming folks is alarming. Like uh, the lower third of Ayanna Presley's um, speech has this headline that says, a leftist on a war path against white men. Mm -hmm. Like if that isn't hardcore defamation. What they do is they instigate uh, hate, you know, they instigate the divide that we're experiencing yeah. in the country right now because these four women have not campaigned on going after white men. That is not what they've campaigned on. In fact, the, the very policies that they've campaigned on, the same policies that they're trying to fear monger about in this segment, would actually benefit people of all genders, all races, you know, every skin color, because we're all suffering. Like I just want everyone who who's hyper focused on the partisanship in the country to take a step back and think about who the real enemies are. Yes, because yes. the real enemies are not the people who are powerless. They're not the ones who are screwing your life. They're not the ones who are robbing you of the necessities to survive in the richest country in the world, right? We're talking about a country that could very easily offer Healthcare for everyone, not access to healthcare, plain healthcare for everyone. But we don't have it because the real enemies are those who are fighting tooth and nail behind the scenes to prevent us from getting the medical care and attention that we need and deserve, right? The real enemies are the ones who have pushed for a profit driven model in education, in our prison systems. Those are the real enemies, not the, the four young women that Laura Ingram is talking about here. These are women who have put forth Forth very popular policies that would benefit everyone, regardless of what your race is, regardless of what your gender is or sexual orientation. It's not even just everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, what they're pushing is something that will benefit people on an equity agenda, a civil rights agenda, a social services agenda. But historically, white women have been the biggest beneficiaries of welfare, of affirmative action, and they are the ones who are gonna lose the most severely of it. To Ada's yeah. point, when will there be an awakening of the consciousness around the fact that this is a raw deal? Mm -hmm. And if people who are these scary, uh, what, what did she call them? Horse women the, of the, 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 the horse women of, of the, the apocalypse. apocalypse. Yeah. Well, it's an apocalypse of um, rule by fear and of few people benefiting from a system. That's what the real apocalypse is, is the death of that system means the awakening and the 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 free access to resources that we right. all should have. Go the ahead. apocalypse for who? Like those of us who grew up in lower income neighborhoods have been in the apocalypse. Right. Exactly. We have been, you know, receiving the short end of the stick for a long time. Now that you have to share a little bit, it's the apocalypse <laughs> for you too. Then bring it on. Then we should have an apocalypse. If an apocalypse means equality and justice for all. Yeah. Exactly. And and understand that Laura Ingram is more transparent about her disdain for these women, but we've seen the way these 
Congresswomen have been treated by other members of the media, even so called left leaning media. Yeah. They have been minimized, belittled, they have been ridiculed. I mean, there was an article just today, I believe it was in The Hill, where the writers were arguing that AOC, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, is ill prepared for what she just got elected to do because she doesn't, she didn't plan ahead when it comes to housing in DC. Right, and they said, well, you know, her financial disclosures indicate that she has fifteen thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars in savings. Why doesn't she use that to buy a home? Are you guys really that tone deaf? Yeah, and the thing is, so they're not that tone deaf. the The reality is, people like Laura Ingram are in positions of power, and I mean economically. Yeah. I mean, she is a host on Fox News who's raking in the dough and she doesn't care about affordable health care. She doesn't care about Medicare for all. She wants to fight against it because she sees that as oh, the government's gonna take away my resources and funnel it to those who are disadvantaged. No, that's not the way it's gonna work. You're gonna have to pay your fair share of taxes. Sorry, Laura, I know you don't like that. But there's no reason why someone like you who makes way more money than people like us, for instance, mm -hmm. should pay a lower percentage in taxes than the middle class, than us. Yeah. So that's really, in my opinion, uh, the inner workings of people like Laura Ingram. And it's economically fueled. And it is economically fueled. And I just want to bring to the attention of grown ups, those of us who uh, are always complaining about ageism and how we don't appreciate it. Well, we as women uh, can't, uh, this anti millennial sentiment mm -hmm. and this hatred that we have towards younger people who dare to do the things that we didn't dare to do, who are flipping the table over, we shouldn't be uh, hating them. We should be celebrating them for demanding what is rightfully ours and has never been. So I can feel the these young, you know, pretty, and that's all subjective, but those these women that are leading the charge, there's a resentment towards them. And those of us who are not in our 20s should be celebrating that for Absolutely. our young women, not become the greatest adversary of them. And that really bothers me. It's so, it's, it's so awful to watch because um, you can see it. You can see the, the envy. You can see, and that is what always keeps women down because we have been so divided and we are so antagonistic with one another, we become our greatest enemy. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.